Hi everyone, happy Easter. Good morning, afternoon, evening, because I have no idea when you're watching this, but I, I wish you and yours and those you love a very blessed Easter. It's different for sure, but Christ is still alive. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Uh, this is my first uh, attempt to preaching to a camera. It's a little strange, but I'm going to do my best, and uh, thanks for bearing with me. Let's start with our scripture. Our first reading is from Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Our second reading, also New Testament, from the Gospel of John, verses, chapter 20, verses 1 through 18. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb. We don't know where they've put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying, but did not go in. And then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb, crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they've put him. As she, at this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize it was Jesus. He asked her, woman, why are you crying? Who is it you're looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. People of God, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As we come to God's word, let's ask for his help. Let us pray. God, on this strange Easter, when we long to be together, when we long for things to go back to quote-unquote normal, help us to still see, perhaps see more clearly than ever before, that because you live, we can face tomorrow. Because you live, life is worth the living. Help us, even though Easter is different, to not lose sight of the importance and significance of the fact that you are alive and well, and you are with us. Help us to understand your word. In your name we pray. Amen. Before we jump in, I hope you're all doing well. Everyone surviving quarantine, okay. Uh, update from the Henian house. The boys have not killed each other yet, 
though there have been many attempts at such. Uh, Ashley's still sane. I'm not sure how, but all kidding aside, we're, we're doing really well, and uh, we hope and pray that you're all doing really well, too. Let's look at the, the, this passage a little bit of John 20. Uh, just some interesting observations uh, that you may not have missed, that you may have missed. Uh, so we know this gospel was written by the Apostle John, who never uh, calls himself by name in his writings. He always refers to himself as the other disciple or the one who Jesus loved. Very humble guy, that John. And uh, I love the humor that John writes with, giving us such wonderful details as, so Peter started running for the tomb, and John beat him there. Again, good job, John. You're being really humble. But today we're not going to focus on, on Peter and John so much. We're going to focus on Mary Magdalene. Because with the way our world is going and the way uh, things feel right now, I think we can all really relate to Mary Magdalene. So let's think about what's going on. Let's think about all the implications. The bad guys have won. They used lies and deceit. They even allied themselves with their sworn enemy, the Roman Empire. The oppressors, they hated the Roman Empire so much, but they hated Jesus more. And they used Rome to murder Jesus in the cruelest, most torturous way possible. I hope you spent some time uh, working through the material I sent on Good Friday just to think about all that Christ suffered on our behalf. And for the entire world, it's truly, truly humbling. But the man that, G, that his disciples called leader, teacher, friend, he was dead. And now amidst all this pain and sorrow, Jesus' followers were being hunted. They were understandably terrified. The new world they dreamed of with Jesus, with Jesus changing everything and making everything different, perhaps even overthrowing Rome, all the things they longed for and hoped for are shattered. It's over. It's done. Jesus was dead. That was a fact. And his body was placed in a borrowed tomb. That tomb was guarded by Roman soldiers just waiting to arrest anyone who approached because they did not want any rumors to spread about Jesus being resurrected? Because remember, he had been talking about that. And some people heard. So it's no wonder that the only person, or the only people that go to the tomb, are women, the faithful women, that along with John were the only ones at the cross. The men were fugitives. They were hiding in the upper room. It's the same logic that caused Peter to warn Jesus not to go to Jerusalem in the first place. That logic was telling them, let's stay hidden. We don't want to suffer the same fate. Only when Jesus ran back to the disciples and said to them that Jesus' body was gone, did they have the courage to go to the grave. Their faith, their belief, their hope, all of them, Mary, the disciples, it was as dead as that body of Christ in the tomb. Yes, they saw Jesus do incredible things, but he's gone now. They saw and experienced it, but everything they hoped for was gone. All they had left were the ashes of dreams that they had. We can relate to this. Those times when someone we love passes away, our hearts break, our lives are forever changed. And in these days, we all have 
all kinds of fears about paying the bills, about going into the grocery store. I know Ashley and I have on our computer at all times all the different supermarkets for home delivery. And we have every single one because they're all backed up for weeks and weeks and weeks. And every time we go by the computer, we look, oh, is there an opening? No. We have plenty of food, but fear is still one of those things that takes root. Fear about losing a job, being furloughed. So many fears that we face in these really uncertain days, and understandably so. And sometimes in the midst of these hard times, our faith is put to the test. It seems like God has abandoned us. We know it in our hearts that he hasn't. We, we always know that. As Christians, as believers, we know God's with us here. But up here, sometimes we question up here, sometimes we doubt. I had a friend uh, in a previous uh, position who used to say all the time that the longest 12 inches or so, I think it's a little further, but the longest distance is from your heart to your head. You can have something in your heart. You can have faith here, but sometimes it's hard to think through it. But Sometimes uh, life is hard, like it is right now. It, it is hard. And sometimes it's easy to function on autopilot, especially in tough times. I don't know about the rest of you, but I've had a really hard time knowing what day it is. Because I, I, my routine is the, is the same every day. Get up, take care of the kids, break up a couple of fights do some dishes, do a little work. Maybe I'll have a, a teleconference. Uh, I've had a lot of those. I'm getting really good at those uh, lately. But the days just kind of bleed together. And I think part of that is because of, obviously, we're all in our homes. But I also think part of it is, you know, when a little bit of hard times makes us have a little despair. And maybe that's a strong word, but doubt. Sometimes I worry. For better or worse, I get the update numbers of what's going on on my phone every day. I'm not sure I should have signed up for that alert. And sometimes it's easy to just go through the motions. The world goes on. We're hurting, but we just don't notice. And I think the Marys felt that way when they went to the tomb. Instead of remembering what Jesus said, they make a very human conclusion to what they find with the empty tomb. Somebody had taken Jesus' body. Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw the stone had been removed from the entrance. Just imagine the way she felt. Things had gone from bad to worse. She was overwhelmed with pain and grief, so much so that she, she couldn't see what was going on around her. When our world comes crashing down around us, and for so many it seems like it is right now, and for some it really is, um, there's a minister in classes uh, who actually is the pastor of a church that's right around the corner from where uh, my grandparents used to live. So I, I know the church well. And in this crisis, she's lost her mother and her sister. Two people she loves in a week, just gone, like that. And you hear so many stories like that. It's, it's difficult. And in these times, God can seem to be very far away. I'm a good Reformed Christian. I'm a pastor. I believe God is in control. I believe God sits on the throne. But in times like this, when I hear someone say, oh, it's just God's plan. Yeah, well, then I don't want to be part of that plan. It's hard. It's difficult. When I hear that, we might politely smile or nod and give a half-hearted amen. 
but inside we want to scream, that's not a great plan. But God knows so much more than we do. In times as dark as these, some people lose their faith altogether. Even the most faithful have their faith shaken. But in the end, no matter what the current situation is, and it's it's dire, it, it is. We're we're in tough times. We're in tough times. But we have to remain faithful. It's always the right thing to do. God will pull us through. Mary Magdalene was about to learn that lesson in a real, real way. She has a conversation with someone who she thinks is a gardener. Why the gardener would be there that early in the morning, I'm not sure. But Mary has a conversation hoping to get answers as to what happens. And she talks to Jesus for quite some time before she realizes that it's Jesus. And if you look at the text, do you see what the cue is, what the clue is? What gives it up? He calls her by name. I always am struck by that verse. That when he mentions her name, she knows. God calls us all by name. Let's read the text again. It's just such an amazing, amazing section. He asked her, woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where you've put him. I will, I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. It's hard to imagine all the feelings Mary is experiencing at that moment. The others have left. And she is alone with Jesus. And she can't believe her eyes. She turns to him and cries out in Aramaic. Rabboni. She leaps up to hug him. Back to verse 17. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Friends, Jesus is alive and well. He has saved us from our sins. He will save us from whatever comes our way. He has made it possible for us to be right with God, which is the greatest source of peace we can ever have, even in times such as these. The other thing about this passage that I think is so timely for me is that Jesus was there with Mary for so long and she didn't even realize it. In the midst of her despair and her hopelessness and her pain and her loss, Jesus was there. She couldn't recognize him, but that didn't mean he wasn't present. And I think that's so true for so many of us. Even in the midst of this global pandemic, in the midst of pain and loss, in the midst of an unknown economy, in the midst of not knowing how long it's going to take to truly flatten the curve or develop treatment or to have a vaccine or when I'm going to get to watch my Yankees play again, in the midst of all this uncertainty, Jesus is with us. God is with us. We are not alone. It might be hard to see him because of all the grief or the worry or the doubt that we have. But he's here. He's with us. He's promised to be with us always, even to the end of the world. That's a promise. That's hope. That's what Easter is all about. So on this Easter Sunday, I know this, this sermon may have had a little more of a subdued tone than other Easter Sundays, but I think it's the message that we needed to hear. Yes, things, our reality is, is not easy right now. It's not. 
And a faith that attempts to just wipe away hard times is no faith at all, but a faith that allows us to live through them and to see that God is with us and that Christ is alive and well. Not only has he saved us, he is still saving us and will always save us. That's our hope. That's our calling. That's what Easter is all about. I so long to be with you all again. Uh, if you're seeing, if you're watching this before uh, Sunday morning at 11, uh, check your emails. There's an invitation to a Zoom at 11 for a virtual coffee hour. I'd love to see as many of your faces as possible. Uh, it'll be disorganized and we'll, we'll be learning as we go, but it's okay. So people of God, this Easter, what do I want you to take from all this? Three words. Jesus is alive. Amid all the pain that this world can throw at us, and believe me, it's doing a heck of a job right now doing that, Jesus is still alive. No matter how painful or challenging life can get, Jesus is alive alive. The evil of the world could not defeat him then, can't defeat us now. The grave could not hold him. Jesus is alive. And as long as we believe in Christ, he will not let this world beat us either. Jesus is alive. Amen. I know you might have a little bit more of the uh, service to work through to work through but i'll give you a blessing here too a bonus benediction may the lord bless you and keep you may the lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you may god turn his face towards you and give you peace amen happy blessed beautiful easter enjoy it as best you can and uh Hopefully I'll see some of you on uh, the Zoom chat Sunday at 11. Grace and peace. Stay safe. Be well. Love and miss you all.